Well, amen. We believe that, that we are the sent people of God. That's a huge deal at Radiant Church. Um, well, good morning. How are y'all doing today? You guys doing good? Happy New Year a week late, but it's still good. We're glad you're here. Uh, thanks for showing up. There's a couple new faces this morning, and we're just glad you're here. You are our welcomed guest today, and uh, welcome to Radiant. My name is Ben, and I have the privilege of serving as the campus pastor here. Uh, young, small church, started in 2019, went through COVID together, and yeah, thank you for being a part of what we're, what we're doing here. We're just glad you're here. There is a connect card on your seat if you're new. Fill that out. Let us know that you're watching and tuning in today and being a part of it, okay? Uh, even if you're online, welcome. Glad you're here, and there's a welcome form for you to fill out as well. Hey, I want, we wanted to kick off the service by talking about a phrase that we use pretty often here at Radiant Church. And the phrase is that we want to be a blessing to the community. We've said it a number of different times in many different ways. And what this is, it's the idea that we want to have a positive impact on the city and the people around us, our neighborhoods, our coworkers, and more. This is the idea we want to have a, a positive impact through practical helps, through our good deeds, but not only that, our, our prayer, our care for neighbors and one another. We want to bless those around us and be a blessing. But being a blessing isn't just about good intentions, it's more than that. Being a blessing is about good deeds done consistently. We've been so blessed as a church that has continually aimed to look at the needs around us and the ministries around us. For instance, um, almost every year we do something called Impact Weekend where we often will even give up uh, a, a Sunday morning. We won't meet and we'll just go out and we will just serve the community around us. This year we handed out over 200 backpacks to those who were in need and did haircuts and it was absolutely phenomenal. We've been partnering with food pantries to bring in canned goods and hygiene items. In fact, uh, two days ago, my neighbor knocked at my back door and said, hey, I have a bag of canned goods for you, which is just incredible, right? Because he knows we do that at the church. I loved it. Not only that, but um, we, we've been made able to bless a ministry called Jericho Outreach Ministries. And they serve to reach the women who um, are currently working in adult entertainment clubs around the city. It's a local ministry. We raised over $11,000 uh, about a month ago, which was just, pr praise God for that. It was amazing. Yeah, you can clap for that. It was amazing. $11,000 in just a few weeks. Not only that, but on Christmas Eve, we were able to give over $1,000 to an orphanage in Haiti called Family Care Haiti that we've been supporting for a number of years. And not only that, but we've even met with leaders for future endeavors, stuff we haven't even shared with you yet that we believe God's put on our heart. But, but the thing is, we believe that there's still a need, and we want to be a blessing by meeting that need. We see the need around us when it comes, to, for instance, people suffering from addiction, whether it's opiates or alcohol, people who are going through despair and finding a way to medicate it themselves, people who are under even spiritual oppression or just feeling the weight and the lostness of purposeful, purposelessness in our city. We see the needs of those who are underserved in our city as food flies off the shelf of the Ankeny Service Center and rental assistant forms come in and we see it all over the place. Not only that, but we see the needs of schools looking for, for good mentors to come and just love and support kids. And this is a big one, the need for childcare in our state. One estimate shared that there's more than 350,000 kids in Iowa than there are child care slots available for them. 350,000, that's phenomenal. And we see that need. And although we believe God's given us a generous church, the question is growing in our minds, can we do more? Are we done yet? Or do we have a little bit more left in the tank? Is God calling us to do more? These are Jesus' words. Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5. Jesus said, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the idea that Jesus is saying, Look, disciples of mine, church, 
do good things, visible things, tangible things. Why? So that people may glorify the Father in heaven through your good deeds and service. So the question growing in our minds is, is there more? Is he calling us into deeper commitment? Are there more ways that we can be a blessing to the community? Do we have a voice in the conversation when we look to the needs around us? Are we done yet? Or is there more? And so today we're going to start our service uh, just a little differently with just some moments of quiet reflection. I know normally we kind of hit the ground running with songs and, and welcome and all of that. And we're going to do it differently. We're just going to pause for a moment if we could. I don't know what your week was like or um, what this morning was like, maybe trying to get four kids here or whatever it was or serve, but we're just going to pause for a moment. I encourage you just to, to breathe and allow your mind to focus on the Lord. And as you do that, would you allow the Holy Spirit to just speak to your heart and your soul today? You know, it's one thing to hear um, a good speech and a good plea for a, a need around us and get inspired and, and give in that moment, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm all for that. But something else happens entirely when we allow the Holy Spirit to prompt our heart for the needs around us. And so we're going to put three simple prompts on the screen, and we're going to take an extended time this morning. And we just want to ask the question, what is it that breaks your heart in our community, those around us, your neighbors? We want to take some time just to pray for those around us in our city. And then finally, would you invite the Lord to just bring a name to mind for who needs to receive a blessing from you. So again, I, I encourage you just to take this time, close your eyes if you'd like, and just allow the spirit to prompt you. Just connect with the Lord. We're just gonna play some soft music in the background. Um, it may feel a little longer than you're used to or comfortable with, and I would just say, hey, lean into it. That's okay. If nothing else, just allow your mind to, to relax a little bit, but I encourage you, pray through this. Where's the Lord calling us next? What breaks his heart? What needs does he see that he wants you to see with his eyes as well? Would you join me in this time of reflection? And then we'll continue on in a few moments. Receive this blessing. Remember, child of God, you who were once defined by your sin and shame, you who are striving and exhausted from always trying to measure up. You, chosen, beloved, holy child of God. You are not who you once were, so don't keep covering yourselves in the clothes of what used to be. Throw off the sin and shame that is weighing you down. You have been given a new heart. The old has passed away, and behold, you have been made new. He hasn't just picked you up and dusted you off. You were dead and now you are alive. And this changes everything. So clothe yourself in the ways of love, the very love of Christ who has brought you from death to life. And may this love lead you to worship him more and more as we await the day that he makes all things new. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. And indeed, uh, anybody out there glad to be here today? Let's hear it. Uh, <laughs> let's try it again. And don't forget, there's people watching at home. How are we doing this morning, Radiant? There we go. 
I know, it's a foggy, cloudy day out, and, uh, but the trees are really pretty. Did you notice that on the way in, how pretty the trees are? And do give a big shout out to those who are watching online. We're so glad. In particular, uh, I, I certainly want to highlight the group that has gone down to Florida and Arizona uh, for a few weeks to stay warm. We're not angry or bitter that you didn't take us at all uh, on that, but uh, we're thinking of you on that. So, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm looking forward to diving into this new series and uh, just going to celebrate a little bit about our new core values and uh, just celebrating the Lord worked really mightily in the last year. It's been incredible to watch. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's up to this year. It's really going to be amazing and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the coming weeks. Uh, first, I just want to take a look at uh, two or three churches and uh, let's just unpack what we have to say today. Uh, it's a church in Illinois and over time, as happens sometimes in churches, they got older. Uh, a little more gray hair, uh, shall we say, as they, as they got older. And they decided one day they wanted to do something about that. And, and so they went out to the community and they wanted to learn more. What are the needs in the community? How can we engage them? And as they pulled the community, uh, they noticed something unusual. For whatever reason, in their community, they had a large number of single moms. And so the church decided, hey, Let's engage them, and they began to invite them to events, they uh, equipped them, they helped resource them at home, uh, started doing life alongside them, and as it happens, many of those moms became part of the church, they started coming, they started enjoying worship there, but what came with the moms was their kids. And so this church that had been getting older and a little bit grayer suddenly had this vibrant youth and children's ministry that they were working through, praise the Lord. Another group is in Arizona, and, and at that church, uh, they were in a rural community, blue-collar largely community, but as happens when you're not too far away from a big city, the urban sprawl and the expansion of the city eventually devoured them, as it often does. We're watching that happen in Ankeny at the moment as Des Moines continues to grow, and uh, when that happened and they grew, the, the, the dynamics of the city changed. What was once blue-collar rural was now becoming more white-collar professional. And the church realized, hey, we've got to engage the community, and they began doing the same thing. Let's ask some questions. What's changed? How can we engage that change? And they, they found something out, particularly because there was a large medical community around them, that 30% of their community worked on Sunday mornings. And so they decided, you know what, why don't we have a Thursday night service? And there was nothing particularly special about it. It was one pastor, one acoustic guitar, and it was family style. But they decided, let's do this Thursday night thing. And what started with a handful of people by the end of the first year was regularly attended by about 70 people. And it continued to grow, all because they asked, how can we engage the community? If you've watched the news in just the past couple of weeks, we saw uh, a husband and wife pastoral team uh, in the Buffalo area. And when that large storm came in, they opened up the church to over 150 people who were trapped or didn't have heat or electricity, food, whatever it may be. And by all respects, probably saved several people's lives by doing that. And so we got to ask a question. What does it mean for us to be a blessing in our community as a church? What does it mean to be a blessing in the community? And we've talked about this. You've probably heard me say it. You've probably heard Pastor Ben say it. Like, we want to be a blessing in our community. But have we really taken a moment to step back and go, what does that mean? Do we even understand what the word blessing means? Last week, we talked about moving from your head to your heart to your hands. Well, let's start there. In the head, do we have an accurate understanding about what it means to be a blessing? And before we dive in, I do want to say this. I believe for a church to walk into that conversation about being a blessing in their community will look different at every single church in every different community. That's why you need to get to know your community and understand the needs. It is not a formula that you apply. It's not a one-size-fits-all sort of thing. You truly have to do the hard work of asking, what are the needs in our community? What do people need? And then step into that. But at the core, when we're going to ask what a blessing is, and if you have your worship guide today, this is going to be your first fill-in for the day. I always kind of ask to follow along with that for a couple reasons. When, one, when we write things down, we tend to remember them better. At least I do. Uh, the second reason is my hope is that you're able to take that into the next week and just reflect on it, pray about it, ask God to reveal more to you as you think upon this teaching today, and, and always asking, how do I apply this in my life in the community around me? 
But when we're talking about being a blessing, at its core, what it means is this, is a blessing is God's protection. When you pray a blessing over somebody, you're praying for God's protection. When we say we want to be a blessing in our community, it means that we want to help to serve and to protect those around us. We want to be caring. We want to be loving. We want to have compassion. But to dive further into what the meaning is, there's a tool that we'll often talk about and often use. It's called the rabbi's rule of first mention. If you ever want to know what a word means in the Bible, the rabbi's rule of first mention says, go to the first place that it's written in the Bible and discover that story. Learn more about that story and you will learn more about what that word means. And so when we ask the question, where is the first place in scripture that blessing is mentioned? We don't go very far. We get to Genesis chapter 12, and we're introduced to a man that many of us probably already know. His name was Abraham. Abraham is a a big figure in the Bible. He's popular. In fact, of the three largest religions in the world, they all claim that Abraham is at the root of what they believe, whether that's the Jewish faith, the Muslim faith, or Christians. Abraham is there as core to their story. But it's interesting what we see when we go to Genesis chapter 12 and we look at this first mention of blessing. Starting in verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Abram, now I will stop there. You know Abram, many of you, as Abraham. But his name was not always Abraham. It would not become Abraham for about five more chapters when God would make a covenant with him. But at this point, his name is still Abram. So the Lord says to Abram, Go! which is something we see woven throughout the Bible, this idea of go. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. And what we discover is when we go, God often calls us out of our comfort zone. He will often call us, interrupt our status quo. He will want to change your normal The call to go from God will invade your comfort sometimes. But God is often calling us to go out of what is familiar and what we know into dark places to shine our light. What does he say to them? He says, I will make you into a great nation. And then our first time seeing it in scripture, and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And this is such an amazing statement at the end. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Boy, wouldn't we love to hear God say that to us? All the people of earth will be blessed through you. It's an amazing promise on that. Now, for the next few weeks, we're going to walk through, like I said, our new core values, and we're going to see that it's go, and it's live, love, and multiply. So today, we're going to talk about go, as we said for a minute, because God did call Abraham to go. And this idea, again, weaves itself throughout Scripture that we are called to go. We are the sent people of God. Jesus would tell us in John chapter 20, he'd say, as the Father sent me, I am sending you. That's core to our understanding about being a disciple. All of us are the sent people of God, which means all of you have been called if you are a disciple of God. All of you have been gifted for that calling and that we are meant to go. Every single one of you in this room has a mission field. Every single one of you. You're all missionaries. It's just that your mission field might be right out your back door. It might be in your neighborhood. It might be at your job. It might be at school. It's wherever your sphere of influence is, that might be your mission field. And God is often calling us out of our status quo, out of our normal, to go out to the world and shine a light for all to see. That's what it means to be the sent people of God. When people see us, they see Jesus. And it forces us to ask a difficult question, every single one of us in this room. We need to wrestle with, are you willing to go wherever God sends you? That's the difficult one. Because like I said, he may send you somewhere you don't want to go. Or someplace you've never even thought of. 
And when God calls and when he challenges you to be sent, will you go? And as we're sent, we're called to be a blessing. And this gets us then to our first understanding about what it means to be a blessing as the sent people of God. And I love to borrow the words of a rabbi, Rabbi Hanan Schlesinger. He had this to say. He said, blessings are not meant to flow into us, but rather they're meant to flow through us. There's a huge difference. See, we're not meant to hoard blessings. We're not meant to simply receive blessings. We're meant to give. This idea throughout Scripture, much you have been given, much you are called to give. Blessings are to flow through us and out to others. We are the vessels of distributing God's grace. That's why C.S. Lewis used to say that when we do talk about ourselves as, as lights, he would say you are nothing more than mirrors that reflect the love of God. You see, when we forget that, we, we tend to think, oh, this light that's shining out of me, that, that must be my goodness. That must be how cool a person I am. And, and C.S. Lewis would remind us, no, at best, you are a mirror that reflects the light of God out into the world. Same with blessings. They're not meant to stay with us. We're not meant to hoard them. There's a word for that. If we're really being honest with each other, that's called selfishness, right? We take God's blessing and we keep his blessing and we don't share it with the world. We're being selfish at that point. Core to our understanding is this, that we are blessed to be a blessing. We're called to be a blessing in the world around us, which then gets us to another set of questions. And man, as I thought of this one this week, I mean, it, it stopped me in my tracks. It was so convicting. And I'm totally hoping it's convicting for you too uh, on that. And that question is this, is the world a better place because of you? You ever thought about that? Is the world a better place because of you? Are you a contributing member of your community and has your existence added anything to the blessings in the world? It's a tough set of questions to wrestle through, but I don't believe that we exist to merely consume blessings. We are blessed to give away that blessing. And then we get to a second thing we have to remember that's even harder about the blessings that we receive and the blessings we are called to give. And that's this. We cannot deny blessings to others. And man, this is the tough one. See, we're called to give. Freely we've been given. Freely we are to give. And blessings, and so we're, we're called to bless everyone. Especially those we don't like. Or those who maybe aren't like us. See, we're not allowed to discriminate according to Jesus. We're not allowed to choose, well, this person can get a blessing, but this one can't. We're not allowed to put dividing lines up that say, well, it's based upon socioeconomics or it's based upon the color of their skin or their gender or their sexuality. No, we have been blessed to bless others. And, and I would remind us, even if you don't like someone, we're called to give. Jesus reminded us on more than one occasion, love your enemies. You're called to bless those you like, and you're called to bless those you don't like. Again, freely we have been given. Freely we give away. Why? Because when we bless others, we show them the example of Christ. When we love, even in that difficult kind of love, it shows the love and care of Jesus. When we help and we serve, it's an example of God's love so that others can follow Jesus. When, when they see us loving as Jesus loves, then they say, I need that. That's different in this world I want to be a part of that. And we've talked about this before, and I ask the question again. When other people see you, this next conversation you're about to have or this next person you're about to engage, do they see Jesus in your life or do they see something else? It's convicting, isn't it? Are you a blessing in this next conversation or this next thing you're about to do? Now, there's three primary things 
you're going to need in life if you want to be a blessing to others. And these are not only individually, but they're for the church as well. I'm going to go through them quickly, and then we'll break them down a little bit. The first one is this. You'll need thankfulness in your life. The second one is generosity. And the third one is compassion or love. And each of these are about the godly life, and we're called to put on the godly life, to live out the godly life around us. And so let me ask you, when you start the day each day and you wake up, do you thank God for all that he's given you? Do you have a heart of gratitude? I remember Kylie, my daughter, a few weeks ago, she got in the car and she said, Dad, what are you thankful about? And before you think, oh, the pastor, he must have just nailed that one. I was like, uh, (laughs) shouldn't be. (laughs) What are you thankful for? Do you have a heart of gratitude in all that you do? It starts there because when you have a heart of thankfulness and a heart of gratitude, it results in a spirit of generosity we realize that one feeds on the next. It's in our thankfulness for all that God does that we realize how much he gave. And and you know this verse, for God so loved the world, he what? He gave. What did he give? His one and only son. That's huge. We serve a giving God. And what you learn through the death and resurrection of Jesus is try as you might, you can't outgive God. We serve a generous God who is calling us to be generous people with our time, our talent, and our treasure. Are you a generous person? And then it's from that heart of thankfulness and that spirit of generosity that we're able to take on the eyes of Jesus and see the world as he sees it. And when we have the eyes of Jesus and we humble ourselves, we become the love of Jesus and the hands and feet of him in our community. When other people see us live, they see this compassion lived out and all that we do. When they see that thankfulness and that generosity and that compassion, we become a blessing to the world around us. Are you a blessing? And the point's this. If if you don't take anything else away today, please hear me on this. Here's the point. In order for us as a church to be a blessing in our community, it starts with you becoming a blessing to others. And what you learn is being a blessing to others is in little Things throughout the day. See, we're always looking for the big thing. We're always looking for that one big event or that one big thing I can do to be a blessing. But did you know to truly be a blessing to others, it's hundreds of little things throughout the day where you deliberately choose to be a blessing in someone else's life. You say, well, what are some of those things? They can be a simple thing like having a smile or a hug. And I get it. So right away, someone's like, well, I'm not a hugger. All right, I get it. Good for you. Uh, you know what I mean? On that, you can at least smile. I mean, I mean, come on, you know, turn that frown upside down. Do something on that. But it starts with a smile or maybe a hug. Here's a big one. Be alert to help others. This is where blessing starts. This is so important, a key ingredient if you want to be a blessing in your community. It starts with awareness. When you walk into a room or a situation or engage someone, it starts with you thinking, can I be a blessing? How can I be a blessing? What can I do? It's just an awareness. And I get it, man. Life has its distractions. It has its busyness. It has its chaos. But being a blessing in our community means we have to interrupt that sometimes, break through it and say, in this next thing, conversation or whatever I'm doing, this next room I'm walking in, How can I be a blessing here? The third thing goes with it. It just means offering to help before being asked to help. 
walk in a room, can you, can you offer to be a part of the solution and not the problem? Can I, let's be honest. Anybody can walk into a room and pick out five things wrong. It takes a leader to walk into a room and find a solution. It takes a person who wants to be a blessing to roll up their sleeves and get to work. And we do it before being asked. It's just walking in and saying, I've identified a need. I want to be a blessing. How can I help? The next one's big. Show hospitality to the lonely. We live in a culture with so many lonely people these days. And this time of year, it only gets worse as we're in the middle of winter. Whether it's that church that engaged the single moms in their community, which is so important. Or do you know, we just... We've got a lot of people even in the church and around us who are just single in general, and they're lonely. When's the last time you invited them out for a coffee or just picked up the phone, called them, texted them, maybe invited them over for dinner? People who are lonely need to know they're loved, and we can be a blessing to them. We're a blessing when we teach or disciple others or just provide godly counsel into their lives. And the last one's so important too. You're a blessing when you have an encouraging word to say to somebody. Or last week we talked about our words. And we said it was more than sticks and stones in the Bible, right? Your words have the power of life or what? Death. Death. So this next thing you're about to say, this next conversation you're going to engage, are you about to speak life into it or death? Your being a blessing in the community might start with just being an encouraging person in the next conversations you're about to have. And remember, these are just a few. It's the short list. There's many other ways that you can be a blessing I want us as a church to be a blessing in the world. I thought about this week as I was reading that passage from Genesis 12 where God was talking to Abram. I, a thought crossed my mind. I'm like, what if we replace one word, just one word in that verse? And, and I know my Pharisee friends out there are like, oh, you shouldn't do that, but I, you'll be okay. Just keep breathing in your paper bag. You'll be all right while we go through this, okay? You'll be all right. What if we just replaced one word? And that one word was this, church. What if God said to us, Radiant Church, I will make you into a great church. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. And more importantly, all the peoples will be blessed through you. What if that was our genuine desire as a church, that our community, that our city, and the world around us was blessed through us? What could God do with a church like that? That's my desire, and that's what we mean when we say we want to be a blessing in our community. The question is, do you desire that? But the bigger questions you have to wrestle with today is, how will you be a blessing? And even more important, who has God put on your heart to bless? I believe if you pray about it, think about it, God supernaturally reveals to us those we need to bless. And so maybe you've already got someone in mind right now. But who do you need to bless in this coming week? And if God puts a name on your heart... Here's what I want to remind you. I love this next verse in Genesis, verse 4. It says this, So Abraham went. Three simple words, but an enormous step of obedience packed into there. God called him, he was sending him, and Abraham went. And so if God puts somebody on your heart, if he's challenging you with a way to be a blessing in your community, 
Because let's face it, maybe you've been constantly talking about, I've been meaning to jo- join that food pantry or, or maybe hospice or, or maybe I've been, there's this other thing that, that I've been wanting to engage. And, and, and you know what I get at noise, chaos, busyness of life, it always intervenes. But maybe now, today, I can interrupt that long enough to challenge you. This would be a great time to step into that. Come talk to us if you need some help with that. But Abraham went. And that's what I'm challenging you to with a simple question. Where is God sending you? Let's pray.